Um, right. So I, I wanted to share with you guys a model that I studied at university when I was um, studying social psychology. And this is a model, it's really interesting. It's something that's pretty popular in like organizational psychology and it was used to understand different perspective that people and cultures have in order to make groups work better and sometimes to actually bring together different cultures of different people. And it's a model that can help us understand um, the psychology of our evolution. Uh, as a humanity and as individuals really can help us see where we are on this kind of spectrum of evolution. And the model, um, it's something that came from the work of uh, Professor Claire Graves. He actually studied um, students and for, for like decades, it started in the 50s, he would just ask them questions about their value systems, what motivates them, what's meaningful for them, uh, the things that they see as important in their life. And he began to see patterns that were uh, emerging again and again, and also changing throughout these students' lives. And he studied for decades, these people. And he built a model with eight stages of psychological evolution. And it's not just, um, it's not intelligence, it's not even EQ, it's not emotional intelligence. He was describing an adaptive intelligence as it was emerging along our human history. And the model goes back 100,000 years. Um, by the way, it was later adapted by um, psychologist Don Beck and his uh, uh, colleague Cohen, and they gave um, colors to each level. And I wanna show you a picture of this so, model before so I go into this. So we're talking about stages of the emergence of human intelligence and human consciousness, is that correct? Yes, exactly. Let me show you the model and then it will be a bit wow, more. You got me very interested. Okay, here it is. Okay, so as you can see, um, this is the model of uh, Don Beck and this came out in the 90s and it is based on Claire Graves theories. It looks like the, the 60s. <laughs> what does it look like? It's the 60s. <laughs> no, it's very colorful. <laughs> yes. The 60s come in somewhere in the middle, um, but it really goes, if you see at the bottom, there's this beige, they give colors to each level. This goes back 100,000 years to our very, very basic animalistic state survival mode. This is a very like beginning um, level of consciousness. Uh, people are very much like animals at this stage. And then it goes to the purple, which is a more tribal level. Now each stage, it comes um, after people feel like they can't solve the problems of their current conditions with the tools mm -hmm. and the consciousness that they have, and then a higher level consciousness kind of emerges. So from that very basic level, people felt like they need to organize in, in order to survive better. So a higher level called the purple or tribal level emerged, and they mm -hmm. started building tribes where they could protect themselves better. And then they already had all kinds of rituals and in art and music and like culture began to evolve. But that was like something very communal and ego, the ego grew. And so a higher level emerged. And now we're talking 10,000 years ago. And that is the egocentric red level where you started seeing empires, feudal empires, like the ego erupting and people trying to control and take power and break the limitations of the tribe, uh, the more tribal kind of structure. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm I'm just going to go and tell you the whole thing unless you have questions or you want to stop me. So. I I do. No, but I want, let, wanna... Let's see the whole picture first. Yeah. Yeah, I want to see where we're going to end up. Okay. So let me just say that at every stage, like I said, there's all kinds of pressures that are pushing people to evolve, and especially because they don't know how to fix the problems that they feel in their existential um, reality. So a new level evolves, and yet the levels cannot understand each other. Like a person on the red level does not understand the, the level before him or okay. the level above him. And that is one of the reasons we're going to see a lot of conflict between people. No, mom, you don't understand me. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Wait, and I it's true so, in, in our personal you, lives, in our families. Yes. It's very that. true. Uh, so you're saying if I'm on the blue level, I don't understand both the le level above me. Okay. But also the level below me. Why is that? Did I not go through it? You are, 
you are in conflict with it because each oh, level comes okay. in contradiction to the level that came before. And there is an, another interesting in, thing in this model that it's, there's a kind of oscillation or it's like a pendulum that goes from um, very individualistic levels to then very um, communal, communal or self-sacrifice level levels. So like the beige was individualistic and then the purple is tribal. There's a sacrifice of self. And then from mm -hmm. that sacrifice of self, there is um, the self, the ego wants to break free again and it emerges this egoistic red level, which is just unbridled power and um, a lust for power. And then you see those empires and the um, slaves and that sort of thing. And then from this kind of unbridled jungle or you know wild west kind of level, there emerges a new, um, more again, more collective level, which is the blue level. And this is already organized religion you know, after all that uh, Wild West type ego, people wanted order, they wanted structure, and they wanted laws. And later, you also see the nation states that come um, on this level. And this is already something that you see in Western culture, where you see a lot of people who have their religions and who value um, nationalism or high or the order of, of the nation state. Um, you see this very much on the right side of politics in America, for example, um, where people want things to be very, very ordered and they value that sort of thing. Um, but from this level, this, again, this did not satisfy people. The ego grew once again. And also there was a time in Europe, there were lots of plagues and people felt that religion was not giving them the answers, wasn't protecting them from this sort of um, scary time. And so a new level emerged, again, a more individualistic level where man wants to create his own heaven on earth using science, using his brain, using his own um, sort of ability to control reality without the help of religion. And so this, this is level, this started... is enlightenment now, more or less exactly. enlightenment, this... renaissance, right? Exactly. This started about 300 years ago with the Enlightenment, the emergence of science, and then business and industry. Um, and, and the orange level is really when you see entrepreneurs who want to change the world and make an impact, and they feel they have the power to make an impact. This is the very orange level that emerged about 300 years ago. And this was very, very individualistic, very centered on the individual. Also, democracy came around here. And then from this place, this was also not um, satisfying because a lot of people felt that, you know, this is a very egoistic level that was really destroying the environment and uh, manipulating people for financial gain, material, materialistic gain. And then a new level emerged, which is the green level, which is again, focusing more on community. And here we are at the 60s with the hippies and communes and social democracy and trying to um, create, you know, legislation that will take care of the weaker parts of society. I think society Seth, and... Seth now feels that he identifies deeply for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, but a lot, a big part of our society is at this green level. If you think about it, there is a kind of conflict right now between the orange and blue and the green level in our society. Mm. Um, and a lot of people are at this level where they feel there needs to be more equality and we have to take care of racism and we have to make sure that everybody's, you know, living together in some sort of equal uh, shared mentality. Um, and so you can see how these kind of mentalities emerged in our societies and yet they are very much in conflict with one another. And that's the really interesting thing about this model, if you can see that the green uh, is the last level on what's called the first tier. And the first tier is the evolution of humanity when it's still focused on its subsistence or our individual egoistic need to survive and be. And each of these levels is really trying to control everybody else and get everybody else to think the same way I think. And it has no consciousness of itself or ability or willingness to see things from other perspectives. And that is what causes conflict and really an inability to solve the problems at our global integral level, which we are really uh, arriving at right now or in the last 50 years anyway. And you see that the higher level that the model describes, it's already um, a second tier, which is a, a level of being, which already addresses the problems of our global existence as humanity. 
and it is integral. It is able to see the need for all the other levels to come together and work together as one whole. And that continues to evolve into a turqu turquoise holistic um, level or meme that starts 30 years ago. And, and that's already the spiritual work that we talk about that you know, is really talking about us as one uh, body, humanity as one global body where the self or the individual experiences itself as one with the whole and not negating the, um, the whole. So it's really interesting to see this. And it's saying that we right now are at this point of taking this evolutionary leap. Um, and it's a very special time in human history in that sense, because we are exactly at this kind of border between the two tiers. And the psychologists, they know that this is supposed to happen, but they don't know how. There's, they say, mm. you guys have to write this book right now we can't give it to you we don't know what this kind of book of rules is going to look like to build these new higher order communities you guys got to build it yourself so and, and i think this is where it leaves us um, who study kabbalah to really fill in the blanks of how do we do this how do we create these higher level um mentalities or, or world views and, and really make them real in our life right now 